What is up everybody, Joe from JLW Games coming at you with another cool video back in Planet Coaster in another episode of Silver Dollar City's Recreation. Now this episode uh, was filmed exactly right after episode 6, I actually recorded them both at the same time. Well, not at simultaneously, you know, one right after the other, uh, because uh, I was having a night where I was just really excited to get stuff done here, and it was a lot of a lot of fun. So uh, that's that's where we're at. We're at. So uh, in this episode, I do actually work a lot on a little bit of the layout of the coaster, and uh, there's I, I think I get the 153 in, and. Uh, a little bit of the barrel roll. I'm kind of working frontwards, backwards a little bit to try and get this thing into as much as proportion as I can. The best proportion I can, you know, to make sure everything is the right sized, you know, everything's turning the right direction. And it's going to be, it's nice to work from back to front from time to time to try and make sure everything is correct in a way. And it helps me a lot. So. Anyways, uh, as I'm recording the commentary for this, it's actually like two days after this recording, so, or actually recording after the, the day, so I actually forgot exactly everything I worked on on this episode, which is actually fantastic, right? And I've had a long day, I'm actually recording this at like 10 at night, after a failed um, attempt at uh, live streaming Central Ridge, because uh, there was a lot of issues with Central Ridge, um, or not issues with the park, just in issues with the stream, uh, where OBS kept disconnecting, and I uh, had a lot of issues there uh, for some reason. So yeah, that was kind of upsetting and kind of sucked, so I had to end the stream early, I tried switching it to Twitch, that didn't work. Uh, it still did it, so um, I had some issues with that, and uh, and uh, that's not exactly how I planned that uh, live stream to go. But anyways, we're talking about Silver Dollar City's recreation here, but anyways, it's just, this has been kind of a long day, because I actually was at a convention uh, today, which actually still has two more days uh, as of right now. Uh, I can't wait to get through that and um so you're gonna most likely see some late night live streams so the live streams are gonna be kind of later uh in the day and as for tomorrow or actually today rather because that's when this video is getting up is uh when you guys see this it'll be today um is actually the main day for that convention so i'm not sure exactly if i'm going to be able to get to a live stream today and if i if i don't i apologize if i do it probably won't be anything special it might actually be kind of like something simple not might not even be playing a coaster um, but we'll see i'll just kind of see how it plays out and stuff like that so i was gonna uh, I, I noticed that i was gonna try and get into a spot where i was gonna work on the clocks and the little props over there but i didn't actually couldn't actually right here actually uh to be exact uh but i couldn't find any clocks i thought there were some clocks in there but uh, i'll definitely figure something out for those props and stuff like that so i actually move on to the other thing i also also placed off screen the um uh an actual an actual uh stagecoach out there that i got from the steam workshop so credit goes to whoever made that uh, as well but i'm gonna make some alter uh just alter it a little bit to make it look a little bit more like the stagecoach for outlaw run so that will be a lot better and stuff like that so <clears throat> as you know here i'm always trying to get as many details as possible as i can in this ride and stuff like that you know and i mainly put you know that little cowboy there because i wanted to get kind of an idea of how big an average person would be uh, on there, so uh, it was kind of, it's also very important to make sure your buildings are in proportion uh, correctly because I actually did this incorrectly and made this a little bit too tall at first, and I ended up having to lower it down. And I didn't realize it until I actually a little bit, and I was like, oh yeah, I have to lower this down a little bit. And it was quite nice to actually have uh, a character there to kind of judge about how tall this needs to be in the first place so this is actually where the dispatch enable button is uh, on alongside of this wall uh, i kind of want to put it like a little prop there or something like that to make it look like it is the dispatch button dispatch enable button and i'm actually going to try and keep uh uh you know an actual cowboy at the end here to make it look like he's an operator or something because you know at, at low run they actually uh, dress up as cowboys and stuff like that so i know that very well uh, so that's actually really cool. And one thing I want to make sure I get right also is the transfer track. 
as well uh, with the transfer building with the maintenance building on the side there where they work on the trains um, I actually know the interior of that interior of that building pretty well so I'll be able to build that pretty decently uh, so that'll be nice so uh, also the exit needs to be correct as well um, I've had many issues of trying to figure out how the exit's going to work out uh, I don't really get all the way into it in this episode but the exit is pretty much kind of like you know another and it's it's it shouldn't be too tough but uh, it's kind of interesting of how it works because there's also a disabled entrance on the other side as well so it's going to be split up into two different pathways and I don't know exactly if I'm going to make it two different pathways or all just one pathway and hide the pathway and stuff like that and just put a railing in the center of it you know it'd be weird because everyone would be walking through the railings so I kind of want to make I, I want to make it at the same time where the guests aren't glitching through walls and stuff at the same time so it's kind of a Kind of an interesting thing of how I'm going to do that. So, um, you know, as for proportions and stuff, it's always interesting how that's going to work. I decided not to work on the little archway there for right now uh, because I was like, I don't know how I'm exactly how I'm going to do that yet. So um, there's also like little cubby holes and stuff at the exit of the ride, you know, uh, on the exit dock. Uh, side of the dock so I want to make sure I build those as well I think I'll have no problem with building those uh, most likely we'll get to something like that maybe in the next episode or something like uh, anything like you know like that <laughs> I actually got a comment on my last one saying how many uh, playing a drink uh, it'd be fun to play a drinking game for every time Joe says um, something like that or st stuff like that I think it was stuff like that <laughs> so I thought it was, I actually thought that was pretty funny and hilarious because I do say that quite often and uh, there uh, beforehand I actually said a lot uh, I would actually say um, uh, in the end you know I said that all the time so I stopped saying that uh, or tried to limit myself from saying that you know I was like yeah I do say that quite a bit and now it's emerged into something else uh, which is stuff like that. <laughs> apparently so at this point you're probably pretty drunk if you have been playing that game um <laughs> it's pretty funny uh th those games are always really funny i've never actually played it myself you know but um uh, maybe someday i should you know i th i made a joke uh as well you know i think i was like watching pokemon don't judge me i don't know why i was watching pokemon but uh there was actually you know, Ash actually says many times, you know, oh, I've never seen that Pokemon before, and I made the same exact joke. I don't know why I'm getting so off topic, but anyways, this is the 153 on Outlaw Run. If you don't know what that element means, it is a 153 degree outside bank turn. That's the exact element name for this. Uh, I've never really seen anything like it on any other coaster. I'm sure there is, um, but um, it's a very interesting element because it is, it does uh, technically count as an inversion. Some people argue that it isn't because it isn't 180 degrees upside down. It's only 153 degrees, um, but it still puts your feet over your head. So it does count as an inversion. I don't know what the actual point is when it, uh, you know, where it doesn't count as an inversion. You know, if it goes beyond 90, does, does that mean it's an inversion? I don't know. Uh, I think Planet Coaster counts as an inversion if it's beyond 90 degrees. Uh, anyways because every time i see the inversion count but that doesn't really count matter you know but as for the statistics of this ride i want to make sure everything's correct and as you can see i take my time on the layout i really make sure that i'm trying to get this correct and i'm not even fully done yet like the 153 didn't turn out completely the way i wanted it so i'm gonna have to go back and alter that a little bit and then uh, as for placement of different things i actually go and create the bank turn that goes under the lift hill and um and there's actually a gap and that tracks all by itself because I want to make sure that spot is in the very correct spot because that's a very important element that that is in the very correct spot and this track actually goes very close to the bottom of the first drop and I want to make sure that's very accurate as well uh, you know the little bank from the outside or the 153 to the right hand side going back down uh, next to the bottom of the drop and then you have this nice little airtime hill that brings you b back over the hill you know because you go down this little valley in the first drop it brings you back over and then you bank right under the lift and I wanted to make sure this was in the right spot as you can see I kind of mess with it because that's exactly where I wanted that track to be uh, when it it's all said and done and connected and I, I kind of judged like exactly where it goes through the lift and it's about 
just around midway up the lift is about exactly where it goes through and uh, it goes uh, as far as i know it goes completely 90 degrees um i might be just slightly less than 90 degrees i'm not entirely sure on that elements but it's never actually spe specifies and then it kind of twists back down and then you go into the wave turn but for right now i actually end up just leaving it at that uh with what i do get and uh that's a lot of the coaster layout because that's all i really have left is you know the um the wave turn and then you know another little airtime hop and then the double barrel roll at the end and then that's pretty much it it's a pretty short ride um it's only 2937 feet of track so it's not a very long ride and i want to try and see if i can't get that number as close as possible as well the length of the track that's a very important statistic to see how well you actually tracked the ride out uh if you have a two if i get around you know 2900 ish around there if i'm just within a hundred or two of that uh, i'm gonna be pretty proud that uh of that because that's uh gonna be something that's gonna be very difficult to do now here, you know, I had a temporary roof right here. Uh, I used it just as a temporary roof to kind of get a feel of where the roof's actually going to be. Because this is actually kind of like a tented roof. Like a tent, rather. You know, like a tent covered roof. It's actually just a cover. It's not really much of a roof. It just has the, you know, supports, which are actually a little round, a little round, um, kind of a round skeleton. But I couldn't find anything small enough. There's not any, like, round, small pieces. You know, and I looked through, you know, the the shapes, and I wish they had smaller shapes. You know, smaller circle, round pieces. Because those would be very helpful for, like, situations like this. Because it is round, and there was no pieces that I could really use, so I end up just using these small wooden pieces in the end, because that's all I could use. Because the round pieces just were a little bit too thick. They, they, were, and that, that's the smallest ones they had. So I hope, I, w I would hope to see maybe some more shapes someday down the line, sometime down the line from Frontier. I'd love to see if they could build some more of those. Um, I will put them on the ends here because they're actually kind of rolled up, and that kind of gives that effect a little bit that uh, the tent is a little bit rolled up, and that's kind of why I use the tan stucco wall buildings for the roof up there or the roof pieces for the wall roof pieces uh, because the it actually is kind of like that nice tan color that actually goes very well with it so i just make like the skeleton and i still don't know what kind of texture i'm going to use for the roof yet um, because i haven't really found anything that will match uh just yet so i just get kind of like the skeleton down and that is going to be about it for you know for the roof right now until we figure that out so uh, i'm gonna have to look through a couple of different textures and find out what i'm gonna do with that i'm very i'm a very awkward builder i, I kind of go back and forth from things frequently you know i only work on this for so long and then i go back and work on something else then i'll go back for that for that for a little bit and it keeps me a little bit more entertained instead of working on the exact same thing over for the longest time and i think it you know maybe adds a little bit to the lives or the videos as well because you know you're not seeing the same exact thing you know being worked on the whole entire time you see lots of different things you know i'll work on the track a little bit i'll go back and work on the queue line a little bit i'll go back and work a little bit on props stuff like that i think it's uh, quite nice and this was another challenge i had right here is to make the end pieces or the end of the tent area because you know i didn't want it to get in the way of the queue line and stuff like that it was kind of difficult and i kind of figured out a little bit of a way it's kind of cheating but in the way it's not uh there's a little bit of a larger gap between two of the sections a little bit if that makes sense but yeah this is another challenge a big challenge i'm gonna have is the little slanted part on that queue line over there is kind of interesting and it's gonna be a very difficult thing to work on but I'll get through it, and then, of course, uh, I was like, well, what? I can go ahead and copy this and put it on this other side uh, of the station, and actually did work very well, uh, to my to my surprise, so that worked uh, quite interestingly, and that's really nice. So, And then, <clears throat> of course, a little bit on this roof, I was like, well, I can put another roof right there, and then uh, I wanted to work a little bit on the border that goes around. Uh, kind of around the stagecoach and make that a uh, nice little prop section look good and then of course the actual sign itself for outlaw run they actually have a very good rock for this that actually 
will work very well for the sign. The only thing is, is the sign is not going to look great, <laughs> obviously, because of the tools that we're limited with. I can't make the exact Outlaw Run logo, but I do the best I can, and they actually have this little statue thing of kind of like this... Um, a uh, guy riding a horse, kind of, I think it's called like a rodeo or something like that. So I was able to use that. You can't change the color, so it, it ended up staying black here. It would be nice if we could change the color, because if we could change the color, then that would be perfect, and it actually worked very well for the uh, Outlaw Run Rock. And uh, it's actually a little bit smaller than, or this is actually, a, the, the rodeo little guy is actually a lot bigger than, Oh, what the actual sign is, but and then of course I have to just put a regular sign here and put Outlaw Run because I can't make a sign that you know has no you know background or anything like that, so uh, it doesn't work really well. I hope maybe eventually they add custom signs that doesn't have like you know wood pieces or anything that they're just the words by themselves. That would be very very nice, especially for that. You know, through the updates and stuff, I'm gonna update the park as well. Uh, if I can make something better and improve it, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be working on this park probably for the rest of my life until, you know, it's the most perfect it can possibly be. Now, as for the pathways a little bit, you know, they are a little bit off color, you know, I need, they're not that orangish, they're not really orange at all, so I need to probably change the color of those eventually uh, as we go along, so this is just going to be a little bit of the outline that goes around the stagecoach and uh, because it does have a little bit of a, a little fence around it it also has a cover uh, actually a building over it now kind of like this little covered covered you know section over it so it doesn't get damaged um, from you know uh, weather and stuff like that so uh, as for this section I'm gonna have to add some <coughs> uh, fences as well which will look really cool and it's pretty rocky in this section where the stagecoach actually uh, sits so it's actually pretty interesting because I actually moved the stagecoach and actually raised the terrain just a little bit because the terrain is a little bit raised up with some rocky textures so I add a little bit of rock there and uh, some other stuff but overall I'm, I'm very excited of how this is looking and uh, it's pretty exciting I hope you guys think that it's pretty close if you've been to Outlaw Run in Silver Hour City uh, I think you guys, you know, it, you can almost agree that it looks pretty, pretty dang close. You know, it's not 100% perfect or accurate. It's never going to be when you're making recreations and video games like this. But um, my goal is to get as close as I can and make it as best as I can. That is my 100% my goal for this is to try and make this park as best as I can and um, as detailed as possible as well. A lot of you have pointed out that I'm going all out with the details here and that is true you know every building every section of the park I'm gonna try and do as many details as possible um, when I when the park opens back up I'm gonna be taking pictures of every individual building and uh, going to try and uh, get as many details as possible when we get back to the other save so um, that's gonna be really fun and interesting but anyways that's about it for this episode i hope you guys enjoyed it make sure you comment like and subscribe for more and i hope you guys are enjoying the series as much as i am so a lot of you uh are very supportive and i uh, think this is a great uh series so thank you guys so much and make sure you have a great day and an even cooler tomorrow and that's gonna about do it for this episode so I will catch you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for your support and goodbye.